Welcome back to the channel, everybody. KX Roars is back again with a new mini ITX case. This is the G200, and it fits snugly between the S500 and S300 that they released a while back. Now, if you want to check out my reviews on those, click up here on the pop-out. Those cases both impress me with their reasonable price and high quality construction. Now we have the G200. It's time to find out if this case is worthy of recommendation or just another cookie cutter metal box. I'm Jesse, this is Bartman's Bits, let's get to it. Before anything else, let's go over the specs. This is a mini ITX case capable of housing a full size ATX power supplies up to 140 millimeters, a CPU cooler with a height of 160 millimeters, and a GPU up to 270 millimeters in length, and either a big old spinning disk hard drive or a single SSD. On the outside, there is an illuminated power button, a USB 3.0 port, and one USB-C port, all sitting on a brushed aluminum strip. The rest of the case is SPCC steel, and to top it all off, there is a magnetic dust filter that attaches to the bottom. As with almost all of the KX Roars case lineup, there is a leather handle up on top. Fan configuration is a bit limited as expected on an SFF case. You can install two 120 millimeter fans on the bottom, but they must not exceed 15 millimeters in height. A full fat 120 millimeter can be attached to the rear, and another slim 15 millimeter height 120 millimeter fan can be slapped on top. Right out of the gate, the G200 differentiates itself from the other cases in KX4's lineup by fattening up the width and removing the split center format. The S500 mounts the GPU vertically behind the motherboard, which allows for it to be much skinnier, but significantly limits the vertical clearance of a CPU cooler. With the G200, the GPU is mounted directly to the motherboard, and in this configuration, it gives a CPU cooler clearance of 160 millimeters. Now this gives us the opportunity to put it in a full-size tower cooler like this one, the air killer. Good airflow is not what comes to mind when I think of air killer. Well, we will see how it performs. The icing on the cake for this case is the ability to toss in a full-size ATX power supply with the large caveat of it being a max of 145 millimeters long. That does narrow down the pool of compatible power supplies quite a bit, with most of the ones I found on Newegg being 150 or higher. One thing of note here is that you can use an SFX power supply, but in order to do so, you need to get an SFX to ATX bracket. I know that some SFX power supplies come with these brackets, but the two that I have on hand did not. Being that both the ATX and SFX mounting holes are standardized, it would be beneficial for KX Roars to include this with their case. Moving on, the fan configuration I chose was simple. One fan attached to the CPU cooler and another helping exhaust out the back. You can install two 120 millimeter fans at the bottom, but like I mentioned before, they need to be thin. Otherwise, they will interfere with the GPU. Personally, I think that the GPU will be pulling in enough air on its own so additional fans in these positions is not really necessary. There's also room on the top for a slim 120, but again, I didn't find it necessary. Now, if you do choose to put a fan on top, they include screws to attach it. Nice job KX Roars for including this and many, many extra screws. Now, as with any build on this channel, a montage must be shown. Enjoy.
The build was pretty straightforward with this design offering up some additional space for cable management. Since I wasn't using any additional components requiring SATA, I got away with some extra room to hide the longer ATX power supply cables, something that you do need to take into account when using that full ATX power supply. The PSU is longer than what is recommended, but you can see it will still fit without any modification. If you're getting this case with all new components to put it in, make sure you stick with the recommended PSU length. A quick note for those of you that do choose this case, make sure you flip the PSU on and figure out if you want zero dB mode or not, if that is an option you will not be getting back to those switches anytime soon. Now let's discuss the build quality. Mesh, 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 and more mesh. Every panel has holes drilled in it, so airflow should not be a problem. More on that later. The fit and finish is decent. I did find that the side panels and weirdly the back panel here had some bend to them. Now it was easy enough to straighten it back out, but be warned, it is quite easy to deform this case. Once it is all assembled, it is sturdy, and I don't think that's going to be an issue. You can see here that the aluminum side panel was sticking out a bit and needed a little push to get back straight. And finally, airflow and noise. How good a case is for airflow largely depends on the hardware being used and how it is set up. The configuration that I use here admittedly wasn't the best. Adding a fan in the bottom for cool air intake as well as one at the top for exhaust would probably help keep temps low and lower RPMs. Only having two fans like I did resulted in an idle that sounded like this and a full load on the CPU and GPU sounding like this. If this is up on your desk, add those extra fans and keep the fan speeds down. Even with only two fans being used, I found that with headphones, I couldn't really hear it, even when it was only roughly two feet from my head. Time to wrap this up. This is the third case from KX Roars that I have reviewed, and I have a feeling it won't be the last. They are releasing what seems like a case every few months, so I'm sure a new one is just around the corner. KX Roars, if you're listening, be careful on oversaturation. If you make too many of these SFF cases, consumers will not be able to figure out which one they need. Too many options can be a bad thing. Now, having said that, currently they're in a good place. A handful of sizes and configurations that make sense. There's also a white and black version of each configuration, so matching your theme shouldn't be a problem. At just shy of $120, it's a bit on the expensive side, but the quality is there, the build is straightforward, and the looks, judge for yourself. I think it looks great, and I actually prefer this form factor to the other cases I have reviewed. If you haven't heard of KX Roars, they are worth checking out for your next build. Quality cases and plenty of options. If you wanna pick one up, head down to the description and click the affiliate link. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.